Hello whiskey fans. Another Tam Navulin today. Sorry. So this is another 40% ABV whiskey, most likely chill filtered. Caramel colouring was stated on the bottom of the carton on this one, as bizarre as it is trying to hide it from us. On this one, doesn't say anything on the bottom, apart from a barcode, because I which I can't read. But if you look on the back of the carton down here, it says it on there. Focus. Come on. Focus. There we go. Again, not in English, because they don't want us to know what they've done. They're trying to hide their crime so they can get away with it. But how bizarre is it that we have this whiskey, which I don't know if I've mentioned yet. It's matured in American oak, so bourbon casks, and it's finished in Sauvignon Blanc white wine casks. How bizarre is it that we have this whiskey, which they admit is finished in white wine casks, so that's pale wine with not much colouring in them, and they've coloured this whiskey so that it looks darker. It's a white wine cask finish that's been made to look darker. The wine, when they sold that to the, the wine drinkers, they were okay with that wine being pale. And Tam Navulin are okay admitting that this has been finished in white wine casks, but they're not okay with letting us see the natural colour of the end product. It really makes no sense. And some people are going to say it's a consistency thing. They don't want multiple batches going out and having noticeably different colours. That might worry the consumer that there's perhaps something wrong with a pale batch. Me personally, I think that it's not a consistency thing. It's a patronising thing. Wine drinkers are okay with a natural colour product and possibly some batch variation. Whiskey drinkers need to be talked down to and convinced and reassured. At least that seems like what they're trying to tell us. But anyway, this is a very cheap product. It's another one, all Tamnaville in, in the UK. It's all supermarket whiskey, essentially. And it's all got a supermarket entry level budget presentation. And it sells for about 20 to 22 pounds when it's on offer. And when it's full price, I imagine it's probably about 30 to 35 pounds and nobody buys it. Some people would argue that this whiskey is not made for us, it's not made for the malt enthusiasts. I would argue that some of these budget whiskies, like the Tam and Double Cask, especially in certain blends and things like your Glen Murray's and stuff like that, you can get Yardhead, perhaps. Some of these cheap commodity whiskies with poor presentations, sometimes they can have something to offer in terms of a no-nonsense easy drinking, casual dram, maybe something to share with friends. No, none of these are going to be the best whiskey in the world, but I think sometimes they give you value for money relative to the price they charge. Anyway, let's get some of the glass and see what this one's like. Tan Navoulin white wine cask. There's loads of these. Hopefully you had a look at the the video on Ben's channel, Whiskey Geek, that I linked to in the previous Tan Navoulin video, where he talks about a bunch of these. There's too many to keep up with. All cask finishes, all different wines and sherries. I don't think I've seen a rum cask finish Tan Navoulin yet, but I'm sure they're thinking about it. So this is the colour that we're talking about. It's kind of standard whisky colour, isn't it? It does not look like a no-age statement whisky that's been finished in white wine casks. It looks like first of all bourbon, maybe a lot, a small percentage of sherry. Why they want a white wine finished whisky to look like it's had first of all bourbon and sherry in it? On the nose. Quite a clean and focused profile on the nose. Getting some notes of white fruits, a little bit of peach, some notes of green grape and a little bit of kiwi, some apple juice perhaps, sweetened apple juice. Also, and I think this is something that I mentioned on the red wine cask finish as well, getting a little bit of a yeasty, slightly fermentary note on this one. Musty, yeasty grape and perhaps like a an elderflower cordial no, because elderflower has a bit of a, a musty yeastiness to it, doesn't it? A little bit grassy on the nose, but lots of clean, estuary fruitiness. 
The important thing is, though, that those white and green fruit notes and the musty yeastiness, it's all very well integrated and it offers some nice complexity on the nose. But as with all of these 40% ABV whiskies, is that wonderful, complex experience on the nose going to let us down with a really weak and watery experience on the palate? Let's find out. Sugary, green grape, syrupy, green grape note. So very syrupy, almost like, um, like a grape cola, like a, a fizzy grape flavoured soft drink. Again, there's a slight minerality on this one, a slight bitter, chalky pill note, but at least this one's not particularly weak. I think that the flavours are much more forthcoming on this one. You get them much more quickly on the arrival compared to this one where I said that you had to really hold it and work on getting those flavours. They're more forthcoming and easy to get on this white wine cask finish. I think that it's true that the palate on this one being only 40%, it's not as robust as the flavor, as the aromas that you get on the nose and the palate is a little bit of a letdown but compared to the red wine cask finish and a lot of other 40% whiskies, it's definitely more robust than you might expect. Going to have one more sip and look at the finish. Slightly tart green apple note on the finish, but it's really over very, very quickly. Short and sweet, literally. In its defense though, I think that the low strength on this one, the low ABV, it really only makes itself properly known on the finish of this whiskey. And I do wonder if that's possibly because we're aiming for a slightly more light and delicate style in this one, going for that, the, the light and sharp and focused flavors that you get from a white wine cask means that you get away with it a little bit more than you do with say a red wine cask. But I do think that this whiskey seems like it has more intensity to it than the red wine cask. And I'd even say that this stuff could probably pass as a 43% whiskey. So that's obviously not amazing, but it's a step up. Again, I do think that you've got that slight bitterness on this one, which is probably partly a result of that low strength, because I find with a lot of whiskies, when you dilute them right down to the legal minimum 40%, one of the last things that you're left with does tend to be a bitterness, bitter oakiness, especially looking at things like, well, a lot of NAS whiskies, you are left with a lot of that bitter ugliness. And I'm also thinking of things like Jack Daniels, the stuff that's now watered down to 40%. It's a very sort of oak tannins, bitter experience, in my opinion. Whereas you look at any of the Jack Daniels products that are bottled at 43, 45 or higher, and they don't have that, at least it's not overbearing in the same sense. But going back to this whiskey, I do think that that chalky mineral note, it blends into that Sauvignon Blanc profile that little bit more unobtrusively than it does with the red wine cask. And that is one of the reasons why I enjoy this one quite a lot more than the red wine cask. I think that you get some really nice flavours coming through directly from that Sauvignon Blanc cask. It's fresh and interesting, but also quite well integrated. I think that it works much better than the red wine cask, and it may even be a slight improvement over the Tamnavul and double cask, although it's still very much a £20 whiskey. But at least it is an interesting twist on the double cask, and in my opinion, well worth a try. Let me know what you think of this one. Thanks for watching and cheers. Oh, oh, oh.